Hi, I'm Jessica Robertson and I'm here to take you on a tour of my studio for PluggedInPhoto.com. Hey guys, it's Pete Wright with PluggedInPhoto.com and today we're here in Ashland, Virginia with Jessica Robertson. Jessica's going to show us a little bit of her studio. We're going to do a great studio tour to see some of her amazing space. And she's going to tell us a little bit about some of the things that led her to the decisions that she made to make a really successful business with the placement of things and some of the workflow and some of the great stuff in her studio. Jessica, tell me a little bit about how you ended up here. Sure. So um, my husband went to Randolph-Macon, and um, that's located here in Ashland. And fortunately, in coming back to the school for different events, um, we noticed there was definitely a need in this community. Um, for a photographer. So um, originally we had our studio in our home and then we opened a space across the street that was about 1,400 square feet. Um, we were there for five and a half years, which we had quickly outgrown that, but there wasn't really an opportunity um, in our smaller community for another studio space that had the street frontage that we currently have. Um, so we've been in this space, which is about 3,000 square feet for the last two and a half years. Cool. And before that, you were home-based? or Home-based for about five years prior to that. So this is your third studio space. So you've had time to kind of figure things out and kind of learn from things that you didn't like and things that you wanted. So we'll get to talk a little bit about Absolutely. that today. Mm -hmm. The room we're in is the entrance to your studio. And as everybody can probably tell by the shadows going by, you've got great street front exposure here. Tell me about the room we're in and kind of some of the decisions you made just about the space that we're in and the exposure you have outside. Sure, so one of the reasons why we were in our last space for as long as we were, not that it was ideal in terms of size, but there wasn't an opportunity in our community to have this much street frontage um, and on this side of the railroad tracks. About two blocks or three blocks up is the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. 80 or so trains come through every day. Wow, there is <laughs> definitely a lot of traffic. So um, all the cars stop and then fortunately people are reminded that we're here by looking at our front window, which we have um, a TV that displays images and rotates those images. Um, also, when people are driving past, because this is our consultation area, they're going to see us being with clients, I think, which I think is also really important to show that we're an active and busy studio. Mm -hmm. So you actually meet with your clients here when you're discussing their upcoming session or potential shoots that you're going to have with them. So Absolutely. this room isn't just for show, it's used. Absolutely. Um, and honestly, our consultations are very important mm -hmm. to our overall um, experience that our clients receive from us. And so we wanted this space to be welcoming just as we try and create that, that feeling for our clients. We want them to feel that the space is welcoming and that um, it feels more like their home and that they can start to envision their portraits in their home. So there's a lot of purpose in the colors that you chose mm -hmm. and the furniture and the things that went in here. Absolutely. And then you also have this great arch over here that we're going to be walking through into your studio. Right. Tell me about the reasoning behind the arch. I know you said that was really important to you to have. Right. So aesthetically, I think an arch creates some warmth as well, but it also created a little bit of separation by the pillars that we use. Um, and I think that that was really important for us because we wanted people to feel like they could come in and it felt welcoming, but we also wanted them to stop. We didn't want them to walk back to the studio. Mm -hmm. um, so that was really important. And then the color tone, as you mentioned before, the warmth and the gold, which also kind of works with a lot of our portraits. Mm -hmm. um, and then we use that color as well through the rest of our products and pricing and that kind of thing too. Very cool. Well, this is great. Well, let's go in and look at some of the other sure. spaces you've got. All right, so we've moved into the sales room. This is where you do your presentations. Tell me a little bit about kind of the thought that went into this space. Sure. So um, actually, my husband picked out the color, and it's green, which goes with a lot of our portraits. He jokingly says it's the color of money, which is also important. <laughs> That's true. So this room is very important for us. Um, you know, the portraits we've selected are diverse. So we have a room or a wall in the room that has mostly children. We have a wall that's mostly families. We have a wall that's mostly seniors, which is most of the clients that we serve mm -hmm. and so we try and show what we would like to sell for each of those clients cool and you do projection we do versus televisions i know there's different types of projection what software are you using for your sales definitely pro select mm -hmm. um when we first bought it i guess maybe seven or so years ago mm -hmm. um we weren't sure if that was actually a good decision with the investment um, but fortunately it's been phenomenal and for most of our clients they really do appreciate the opportunity to be able to project the image that they've selected in the space that they want so mm -hmm. they feel really secure and important their portrait purchase. So when they're in here, where do they sit? And as far as sales, I think you said Robin does your sales versus you. She you does. Get somebody else doing your sales. 
Where do they sit? Where are they in located proximity. in here? So um, our clients sit on the couch. Obviously, we want them to feel like they're at home. We want mm -hmm. them to be comfortable. Um, and then Robin in very close proximity, only a few feet from them. And she's able to view her monitor, but also be, be able to see the projection screen. But most importantly, to keep an eye on our clients and their facial expressions mm -hmm. so that she feels very connected from them with them. And so it doesn't feel like she has a separation with our clients. Mm -hmm. Any key things in here? I know, I know we've got the table right here behind us that has a few odds and ends, phone covers and uh, little accordion, things right. like that, uh, point of sale type stuff. Are there right. things like that that are important to you to have in here? I think it's always important to show a variety of things that are available to purchase. So few people feel like there are options for them. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, we obviously aren't relying on small items mm -hmm. for our, our sales. However, we do have some uh, places where if you purchase a certain amount, then there is something else that you get. Um, and we actually just really started doing that, but it has been beneficial. Um, most of our clients will purchase within a collection. And so if there's outside items, those need to be smaller items. And so that's when those come into play. And being in close proximity to where they're sitting, when they lean forward and we go over their, their invoice with them, that's when they go, oh, hey, what is this? And so it's not a pressure sales kind of environment. It's an environment like here are some opportunities. Um, for additional items. And I noticed in here you've got a 16 by 20 right behind us. We did. And you're really smart in that you took the 16 by 20, which everybody considers to kind of be a standard size, right. and you did two things to make it seem really small, which mm -hmm. obviously is going to push people to the next largest size. Mm -hmm. uh, you put it by the largest thing in the room, which is your projection screen, Absolutely. and then you put it up unframed, which also helps diminish the size of it. Uh, but in general, I also see you have 8 by 12s, but the 8 by 12s are presented as clusters. Tell me kind of the thinking in all Behind that. Behind that. Um, so we put items closest to our clients that we felt like we really wanted to sell. We want to sell clusters. Mm -hmm. We want to sell We want to sell portraits. So mm -hmm. for some of our clients, they don't want just one image. Um, although I do believe in the impact of having one strong image for them. Um, with our seniors, not that they have multiple personalities, but they mm -hmm. want, to, you want to show their diverse interests, mm -hmm. um, whether it's smiles, whether it's a little more serious. And so having that opportunity to show different images is, is great. So in close proximity, we do show a cluster or grouping. We show something larger in terms of a cluster, a little bit further away from them so that they can, um, I guess, tolerate the size of it, mm -hmm. um, or I even envision it in their home. And then to the left, we have other options as well um, for composites. And so for some of our clients that don't want that one image, composite options are, are great, especially like our 10 by 30s, which mm -hmm. have been very popular. Very cool. This is a lovely space. Do clients kind of feel at home when they sit in here as well? They do, they do. I think that you know our, our furniture is really important, so the leather and it's comfortable, you know, having um, lighting that's comfortable. I think that, again, bringing them into a comfortable space, a home-like environment, I think it's really important. Yeah, and I see you also have crown molding at the top, so you've kind of disguised the fact that you have drop tile ceilings exactly. by putting things in that take what would have otherwise been kind of a, a bland top right. and drawn attention away from that and said, okay, this is a high-end mm -hmm. location. Right, exactly. And fortunately, again, having a good relationship with um, um, the, the man who owns the building, it's been wonderful that he's allowed us to do those kinds of things, mm -hmm. obviously upgrading the space, but also providing a warmer environment. And having higher ceilings is wonderful for your camera room, but can also make it feel somewhat um, open and airy, but also a little cold at times, so the crown molding does bring you down a little bit. Yeah, this is great. This Thanks. is a phenomenal space. I'm sure your clients love it, and I imagine your sales are probably reflected in it by just having the ability to show what you sell. And I think that's a fault of a lot of photographers. Mm -hmm. They have a camera room that has a few things, but mm -hmm. they don't really show the full complement of everything you sell. You guys have done a really great job Thank with that. you. Thank well, you. let's keep, let's keep going. Out. I want to see, I, I noticed the hallway that we walked mm -hmm. through actually has a frame wall, and then mm -hmm. the next room over is the production room. Let's go check that out. Great. Thank you. So now we're in the production area, and this, for most studios, is kind of the heart of everything. This is where, no matter what you do, it all ends up in this room. And it comes here, it gets finalized, packaged, and then moved out. Uh, and I know this is one of the spaces that you said you had the most changes from uh, your experience in other places. So tell me about this room. Um, so in our last studio, I think the problem in our last studio was this was a forgotten space. Mm -hmm. um, we tried to incorporate it in our office space, which obviously didn't work. Obviously, you can't work in your studio when mm -hmm. you're photographing in there. And so I think that this is where we had the most improvement. So taking all of our ideas of what kind of works and what doesn't for organization was very helpful. Um, in here, we do have a ton of frames. Um, those that our clients have actually purchased and are mm -hmm. waiting on products, but also um, frames that we keep so that they can leave with the frame once their portraits come in as well. So, and I'm looking, 
you've got a ton of frames on the wall behind you here that you keep mm -hmm. in stock. And I think you had mentioned you try to stock what you sell a lot of, but more importantly on the frames that are non-typical sizes. Right. Not your 16 by 20s and your 20 by 4s that you can get instantly, but the eyeball sizes you've got here. Right, so uh, full frame. So tell me why you keep so many frames that are your typical ones for the benefit of your client. I think that most of our clients, if they know they can walk out of here with mm -hmm. a frame, are more likely to go ahead and say, you know what, let me wait 15 minutes so you can drop that in there for me. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's just ease for them. But I also know for us, because we do buy a volume and have a good relationship with our vendors, um, specifically Magnolia and GW, mm -hmm. they have been willing to work with us on pricing. So if we buy a volume of frames, they're willing to give us a little, a little discount there as well. Um, and we want to make sure that our clients don't get frustrated when they leave with our portraits and they go, 8 by 12, where am I ever going to get a frame for this? Mm -hmm. And so that's why we keep a lot of those in stock as well. So um, I'd, I'd imagine that helps with your sales. They're selling a lot more frames because mm -hmm. of the convenience of, well, it's here, it's ready, mm -hmm. I don't have to go somewhere else and pre-order something. I, I'm sh I know you have a wall of frames out right. there, so if they want a special order, something right. they can. But and then you do have all your 8 by 12s over here. So you right. have a lot of 8 by 12 frames. We do. Uh, and I think most studios don't carry that size. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense to have that. You know, explain your thinking with 8 by 12 frames. Um, well, for, for us, we generally have a, a style that people are going for. So we know certain moldings will definitely lend themselves better to certain images. Mm -hmm. And so we selected our moldings based upon that. We also have made sure that we've selected moldings that are not things that when, when they walk into a big box store that they're going to see there because they mm -hmm. are unique. Um, and I also think that because our clients are, are mixed clients in terms of males and females, we have to be careful in terms of the moldings that we select so that they're not too feminine or not too masculine mm -hmm. and somewhere in between as well so those bronzier tones work really well for our portraits mm -hmm. generally speaking and it's because it's a size that's harder to find mm -hmm. when they go to the big box stores right. they can always find an 8 by 10 they mm -hmm. can always find a 5 by 7 but an 8 by 12 they're gonna have a limited selection right so. and it's not that we make a million dollars on mm -hmm. it but it is an add-on mm -hmm. item and it does add up at the end of the year when we look at our our year in numbers it's shocking how much money we end up making you know off of you know hundred dollars here fifty dollars here that kind of thing mm -hmm. so. and one of the things that you had mentioned that you gathered from other studios mm -hmm. that you had seen through your years was the storage space up right. here. Uh, and taking advantage of your height. Tell me about this. What's this and the handles? Yeah. So, um, again, this came from visiting other studios and kind of seeing what worked for other people as well when we designed this space. So going up again for storage was important for us. Um, but also um, the, the backup in there is backup 8x12s, some moldings that are waiting on product to come back from the lab mm -hmm. uh, and then to be honest with you it's, it's it's a great space for us to just have additional product mm -hmm. up there the handles are because we go up on a ladder to get them and so mm -hmm. for balance we are able to hold on to the handle and bring the product out so a nice little safety it gives you a hand so you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about getting a little wobbly on the right. ladder and that's kind of nice so if you have right. a client image that's waiting for pickup and you don't want to take a chance on it getting messed up by somebody kicking it or something <laughs> yeah. running into it, you can stuff, stick it Put up it there. Up. I imagine mm -hmm. that comes from experience of having had exactly. that Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. Right back here you've got your battery charging station and uh, that that's pretty smart to have everything centralized. I know during sessions it's really mm -hmm. important to not have to go hunting for things to come in, I need a battery or I need a card or I need right. something all in one location. Anything else in here that uh, is really important a, to you? A storage shelf over here, and this is only for clients' uh, work that is completed and ready for pickup. Mm -hmm. So when a client comes in, obviously we have an appointment for them, so we're able to quickly pull um, their product out and bring it up to the front, display it, pull our easels out. We already grab some sample frames, whether it's corners or um, 8x12s. Mm -hmm. And if we have a 16 by 24, whatever size their portrait is, then we'll pull that out as well. So even if they haven't purchased it, mm -hmm. when they come to pick it up, it's presented to them in mm -hmm. a way that may influence them to go ahead and make that purchase. But they get to see it presented versus here's your box to begin with. Exactly. Very nice. And we definitely want to make sure that every image is as they have requested. We've taken care of all their retouching notes, that there's no question they're 100% happy before mm -hmm. they walk out the door. This is your framing table. Mm -hmm. I see on your framing table, you've even taken a standard table and covered it in carpet, but you've used bed raisers or bed risers I guess you would call mm -hmm. to get them up to the, a nice working height for you. Right in our last space we did find that we were uh, bending over a little bit too much in terms of having to work at an angle that's just not comfortable even mm -hmm. for shorter people. So um, the nice thing about this table is that it is up a little higher, it is a little more functional um, for us in terms of work, working on the table. Cool. 
And you cut your own wallets? We do. We do. We just found that, um, well, there's a little bit extra time and waiting for them to be cut. But also, probably more importantly, we were finding that that was something we were having to have remade. Mm -hmm. And so we found that for us, going ahead and cutting them ourselves and making sure every wallet is cut properly, that our logo is not cut off or the head's not too close to the top. It just mm -hmm. made more sense. Um, and along with us mounting, we mount our own 8x10s and 8x12s. Uh, so that's really helpful in terms of that space as well. Yeah, and you've got great counter space there in addition to this. So you have the ability for uh, your staff to be able to work in multiple areas at one time and not be on top mm -hmm. of each other, which is In a is busier really nice. season, it's really important. At Christmas, someone's framing, someone else is preparing an order, and sometimes a third person isn't mm -hmm. here. <laughs> and even when they need to grab things, they can mm -hmm. grab something here and somebody can walk and grab something under them without having to fumble right. over each other. Yeah. So you've actually taken, it's not a small room, but it's not a huge room, but you've really maximized made the space functional. and made it functional and the ability to have a lot of things in here but not feel crammed. So right. that's really smart. Yeah. Well, this is great. Show, let's go over and look at your office space real quick. Perfect. So this is the office area. This is the space where all of your staff comes and they do all the stuff behind the scenes probably before your production area happens, but in terms of getting the orders ready. Talk to me kind of about the organization. I know we're kind of in the thick of your busy season right <laughs> now, so everything is kind of chaos, and it's a good problem to have. But talk to me kind of about your workflow and what we have going on here. So our workflow is something that over the years we've really kind of honed and perfected. Obviously, when you're dealing with uh, images that you can't recreate again, you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you take the time to have a system and a process. So for us, after I capture, I bring the card in and I immediately put it in an envelope with the client's paperwork. On the outside, I always list the client's name. I list um, the date that it's due. We do post our images online for mm -hmm. our portrait clients um, as well as our wedding clients. We do create a folder that says Jessica's faves and that kind of gives a little bit of influence. Mm -hmm. We do not activate them online until they have a session set up to come back for ordering. Yeah. So that's very important for us in terms of our flow. Uh, Robin will take the images and she will put them through Lightroom, uh, take out anything that's blinks, take out anything that's just not flattering, and then renumber everything. We do make a backup DVD at that point. We do make a backup of all originals before anything's been taken out. We do upload them to an off-site location mm -hmm. to make sure that everything is safe and secure. After that, the client comes in for their ordering session. After the ordering session, they come to me, I do the invoicing, and then it comes back over to Karen. And Karen does the initial retouching. And then because I still have to touch everything because my name's on it, mm -hmm. I just can't fully let go of everything, <laughs> then I do the final retouching and I send them off to the lab. Right. And it's kind of nice that you're all in the same space. Mm -hmm. You've got a little bit of separation mm -hmm. if you need to have a phone call right. and need just enough of a buffer that right. you're not on top of each other, but you're in the same room so mm -hmm. that you can see each other and talk to each other whenever you need to right. do something. They can put up with my music, yeah. you know, that kind well, of thing. And the right. flow of your entire space in terms of everything kind of flows nicely. Uh, the, there's enough separation that you don't feel like you're, you're, on, top in, you're on top of each mm -hmm. other. And the clients don't have to see things that you don't want them to see. Right. But you can get in and out quickly for places. Right. Uh, and the partition was something I actually really questioned, whether mm -hmm. I wanted to have a little tiny bit of separation or not. For storage purposes, having an extra... Another face, wall yeah, for here. right for us to actually be able to store products is, was a good thing for us. I also think that you know when I'm doing invoicing or when I uh, do something that's just personal, it is nice to have a little bit of privacy. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right there. Mm -hmm. And then I mean, you've got all kinds of storage space in terms of file cabinets and mm -hmm. little slots and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, it's one of those. You can tell when a photographer's busy and they've been doing this a while when you have that type of a storage system mm -hmm. because you have to kind of come up with a workflow to make sure that you know where everything mm -hmm. is. Uh, anything in here that that you've carried over from other spaces, things that you didn't have at other places that you were like, I can't wait to add that, things that are really important and crucial for a photographer to keep in mind when they're setting up. I think that making sure you have enough space for storage mm -hmm. is, is huge. I think that we still have an opportunity to kind of move up, mm -hmm. and I think that that's on our January, February project <laughs> list, which is constantly growing as the season progresses. So I think storage and making sure you have a space to expand, especially in the office, is really important. 
I also think listening to your employees and what makes them most comfortable, you can see that our desks are elevated, and that's for a couple of reasons. Sometimes they just want to stand to, to work on the tablet to do editing that way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they want to be in a higher sitting down position. But having having the shelves higher allows for storage, but mm -hmm. also it allows for them to stand if they want to stand for a little while while they're doing their work. And so for for me, part of creating this space was listening to what our 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 employees wanted. Mm -hmm. They wanted a window right next to their desk. They don't want a window right next to them. So listening to what they want, I think, is also really important. Yeah, and having that higher desk and the higher mm -hmm. chairs, when you're in a business where you're constantly on the go up and, down, up and, and down, you're down. in the production in here, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice on the knees and on the body to not have to do much to get up and down. <laughs> so that's actually kind of a nice yeah. thing. I noticed that. And I'm like, wow, that's really cool that the desks are kind of high. Yeah, definitely not yeah. my idea. <laughs> but it works really well, yeah. Well, this is really great. This is a fantastic space. Let's go check out the camera room. Great. Awesome. All right. So now we're in the camera room, which is, to me, one of the nicer camera rooms I've seen for a while. This is really fantastic. We've got a lot of space in here. Uh, and I know we talked a little bit. You've got a, a ramp that leads up in here that you had to put in for a handicap access that I think has a great entrance. I know it provides some challenges, but in general, you've just got a really nice entrance into the space. Tell me about some of the decisions that you made that went into the space. I know you've got the rack lighting system right. that keeps things off the floor, right. but tell me a little bit about what, you're, what you've done in here. So we really wanted to utilize every single angle, and so we painted the walls first, mm -hmm. and then obviously put backgrounds, um, roller systems on top of that. And so with this wall, you know, there's two different options in terms of background. Um, I know that some people can kind of get by with smaller spaces, but we wanted to make them large enough so we could photograph even a family on them if we wanted to. Um, and then we have smaller backgrounds there. Um, behind us, we have eight backgrounds here. Um, we did put in a track system, which is actually a new addition, I guess, with every space. We're kind of mm -hmm. evolving and changing constantly, but the track system has been wonderful in terms of getting the uh, light stands off the floor. Um, also, um, we do have a pretty large um, dressing room, which has also been really helpful in terms of where we um, allocated the use of our space in the camera room. And that's camera right room. off of the camera room, so they don't have to worry about people walking in. Once right. they're in here, everything happens mm -hmm. in here. And even having a bathroom back here is nice mm -hmm. so that you know, our clients have one in the front and then we have a bathroom in the back, which for functionality, mm -hmm. obviously that's important. Absolutely. And, and I noticed you left the center block walls up, so you've got this raw texture that you can shoot on. You've got really great windows around, so if you want to do some natural window light mm -hmm. shooting, you can. Uh, but every inch of this space is shootable. I mean, every wall, even the wall to the mm -hmm. outside of your dressing room right. has great texture and great paint that you could shoot on. Right. So to me, to utilize your space in here in such a way that you can do so much mm -hmm. and not be limited is fantastic. I mean, it's a, it's a large space to begin with. Is that something you picked up when you were in a smaller space, using all the space and then just translating that to a larger area? It really was. Um, obviously in a smaller space you're forced to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and then in a larger space we want to keep that same kind of mentality of use of space. And we did hire um, a faux finisher to do the front wall in the uh, entry area. And then we also used her back here both for our dressing room, which we can photograph against, as well as the additional three walls. Um, so that was wonderful having an expert to do that. Mm -hmm. made a big difference. And I, and I know you said earlier one of the things that you were doing in here now is you're starting to move things off the floor Absolutely. by putting hooks on the walls and things like that. Are you, is that just something for everything in here or? Well, I think that as you grow, you uh, accumulate more um, stuff that you're supposed to use. And so normally in January and February, you kind of reevaluate what we've used, what we haven't used. Mm -hmm. And I think getting that stuff off the floor is also a good option, but still keeping it accessible. I found that I put products in the um, back closet. I, if it wasn't something that I saw, it wasn't something I was going to grab. And so we find that pulling it into the space and um, putting it up off the floor is probably a good option as well. So just like in your production room where you got things up off the floor, you can still right. see it and you have access to it if you want, but you're using, I mean, you've got what, 12 foot ceilings in here or mm -hmm, maybe, maybe a little higher. more. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have the ability to go up. Right. Uh, just like in your production room, you can take advantage of the space that you have and really move things up off the floor and it gives you more floor space to shoot in. That's mm -hmm. really Absolutely. fantastic. Yeah, and even for safety for clients, not tripping over things mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. No cords to yeah. trip on. Absolutely. I see you use a camera stand. We do. Um, mostly for when I'm doing um, a tux or a drape, mm -hmm. but also with little children when I'm on the floor, it's an opportunity for me not to have to make sure I'm um, composing properly, that I just kind of set it 
and then I can mm -hmm. can roll in and so around. So you're not stuck behind the camera. You can actually get out and try to get those expressions from Absolutely. little kids. Absolutely, yeah. And, They're constantly moving, so. Yeah, and I mean, that can be so much of a barrier to be behind a camera. It's almost intimidating. Like, what's that? Right. So to get out and to be able to interact, it really personalizes with your client. Absolutely. And we've got the ladder here. Tell me about the ladder. Um, so it's something I have a ladder for in the studio, and I have a ladder that I keep in my car. Mm -hmm. um, being only five, three and three quarters, we'll claim all of that. Um, it is a great opportunity for different angles. I think it's important anyway. I think that we should always be you know, getting down low or getting up higher. And for a lot of our clients, um, especially with corporate, corporate headshots, um, I will say that they appreciate that I'm up higher for them and that they realize that that's a better angle for, mm -hmm. for most, especially women. Um, but I know that it, it's an item that's probably my little secret thing and I, I, I have to have it always. So. Yeah, and I guess the reality is if you're on this, you're taking something that they wouldn't do themselves. Right. And the approach is, let me give you something that you can't take yourself. So Absolutely. Very smart. Mm -hmm. uh, anything else in here that you really brought in and changed from experiences from your other spaces, things that ah, I really didn't like that, and now that I've got a new studio, this is something I really, really want to do. Um, you know, I think that lighting is really important, and so for us, making sure we use our, you know, Larson soft boxes, um, photogenic lighting. I think that you know those things are really important in terms of translating to the space. Um, we still do have one light on a, a camera stand that we're able to kind of rotate and move around. But I think making sure that we allow for the space to accommodate for the lighting that we wanted, um, I think was really important for us. Um, and even just you know having multiple hair lights um, as well. And kind of a silly thing, but we did put in almost um, the pull down extension plugs, which is really helpful for us. We don't have to plug into a wall. Um, and so we have like, I think six of those in the ceiling or nine of those actually. It's kind of like nine you're in a mechanic shop. It is kind of like a mechanic <laughs> shop, but it really works well for us in terms of having accessibility to you know power. Mm -hmm. Well, and I love the idea that you don't have, you don't lose shooting space on your walls because you've right. got outlets on the walls instead. Mm -hmm. You have them in the ceiling. That's I didn't even notice that until you mentioned it, and that's just brilliant. I love the idea of that. And this keeping is, with an industrial feel, I think, is really important because they redid our air conditioning a couple of times. Keeping with that industrial kind of mm -hmm. raw feel in the back, um, and I do think that it's surprising because it's so warm in the front. I think that people, when they walk to the back, they're like, "Oh wow, I didn't realize you had all this back here." Mm -hmm. So I think that that is kind of um, a nice, a nice feature as well of the space. Do you have favorite areas in here to photograph? Hmm. Well, I think it's always our challenge to try and create new and different things. And so if I haven't used a wall for a while, I'll challenge myself to, to do that. Um, I think that we tend to cater to a more traditional client. Mm -hmm. And so I think that they want a background that kind of disappears. Mm -hmm. So I think a senior background might be different than for a family background, which is different for a baby. And so I think that because we have the opportunity to have a variety of backgrounds, I think that I think for different subjects, it's good for different different backgrounds. So are most of your sessions blended sessions? You do a lot in studio and then you outside and shoot on location as well? Exactly. So I think the studio is great for us for maternity sessions. Um, I think it's great for newborns. Um, and then I think that like our seniors want to have some things in the studio and outside. A lot of our families, when we discuss, they're either inside families and they don't want to sweat, they don't like bugs, they don't have a special place. They want something clean and classic that they can't get from other photographers and then you know for our clients that just had that special place or want it on their farm or want it at a location that's special to them fortunately we're able to you know go on location as well do you have one favorite thing I think that's everything everybody every photographer when they're kind of going in there designing their perfect space in their mind mm -hmm. and saying when I build my first studio mm -hmm. these are the things I want to do they, they want to get into the mind of the photographers that already have it and mm -hmm. say, okay, what things would they change? What things right. did they bring with them when they moved from other spaces? And what's their absolute favorite thing? Do you have an absolute favorite thing about this? I know that's a tough question. That is, that it is. It seems like you've got a lot of the favorite things. The conglomeration of all of it is really nice. I think that us putting in a flooring that is something we can shoot on as well, I think is mm -hmm. very helpful um, because purchasing 12 by 20 foot backgrounds is a costly expense. So I think the opportunity to use the floor, and it also kind of translates into that home environment as well. Um, and so I think that that's been really helpful. Um, I think that having an open space that you can constantly kind of change, I think is also really helpful. You know, walls can limit you. And so having that open space, I think that for me, I have to have the height of the ceilings, um, not only for holding the backgrounds, but also, um, you know, for the, our lighting as well. So I think that one of the reasons why we weren't able to move out of our old space for a really long time was because there wasn't a space of this size available. And so being that this was an old flooring um, space and this is kind of the warehouse, it, it translated perfectly into our needs. It really does, this is fantastic. Well, 
thank you for giving us a tour of your space and showing us around and letting us see how amazing it is. I, I really appreciate it and I hope all of the people that are watching this uh, enjoy it as much as I have today. Uh, it's one of the few spaces that I've seen that has really thought up every little inch of space. Thank you so and much. And constantly thinking it through too, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's probably one of the biggest lessons that I've learned from everybody that I've seen in terms of studio space. You're never done. You're yeah. always constantly evolving. On so. that list that we do in January and February, for sure, we're more Absolutely. slower, yeah. Well, thanks again, Jessica. Thank I appreciate you. it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed today and we'll come back and, and, and view some more of our videos on PluggedInPhoto.com.